Good morning, everyone. It is morning after all, isn't it? So today we're going to talk about Alzheimer's, diabetes, as well as various cardiovascular diseases and the common thread. Many of us have looked at medicine and we've went through our basic sciences, we went into clinical rotations and we start with histology, pathophysiology, we learned about the cells and I remember back when my professor of histology, Dr. Guha, would ask, well what does that cell do on the slide? And then all of a sudden we got in busy clinical practice and then we saw conditions, diabetes, Alzheimer's, and we lost sight of the microscopic aspects of disease. So today we're going to have a common theme discussing some of the molecular mechanisms involved in disease. So much like a microvascular surgeon or a neurosurgeon, we all hold those individuals in awe for their fine tuning, their ability to delicately work with the tissues. But aren't all of us as functional medicine doctors working at that microscopic level and even further to the place where we can't see? So, Mitochondria, of course, are related to everything from cognitive decline to aging onwards. But the only problem is our mitochondria, which I call with my patients the AA batteries for the Energizer Bunny, which is the 75 trillion cells that make up our bodies, they also begin to fade and wear down. And some of the very medications that our patients come in on actually cause mitochondrial dysfunction. So when we do that history of well, what medications have you been on, one of those medications actually might have led them to our doorstep, lo and behold. As many of you know, as a naturopathic physician in Oregon, I have a DEA number, I prescribe medications too. So this is not a knock on medications, but just that sometimes medications, as well-intentioned as they are, may also cause problems. So here's a list of medications. And actually one of them, the anesthetic propofol, is a common theme between Michael Jackson and Joan Rivers. Both of them had had that right before they passed away. And many of us that have undergone general anesthesia or various procedures wake up and we're not quite as bright. In fact, when you talk to your patients that have had multiple surgeries, you say, yeah, I'm just not quite as bright as I was before the surgery. Could that be a mitochondrial poisoning issue? Likewise, you'll see, of course, the statin drugs causing mitochondrial dysfunction. Metformin, great medication, of course, derived from Gallico officinal or goat's rue, as many of the medications which we commonly prescribe in practice, over 33% of them have natural origins. But then we look at things like Prozac, that could actually cause mitochondrial dysfunction. Lithium can as well. And interesting, I, right before coming to the conference, I had a gentleman come down from Olympia, Washington. So I'm in Oregon, about two or two and a half hour drive, and I call him back, we're playing phone tag. He's a com commercial fisherman. And he's bringing his son down to see me, and his son is in desperate straits. So I says, well, let's make sure that I can actually help this guy before you come all the way down from Olympia, Washington. And he wasn't talking back. I said, well, what's going on? I said, your son's in the car, right? Lo and behold, the poor son had been on cannabis two ounces per week since he was 13. Now he's 17. And he had been put in juvenile detention, and he actually had been poisoned in juvenile detention with a PCP latent cigarette with embalming fluid. But worse than that, right after he had that psychotic break after that experience, they put him in solitary confinement for seven days. But you're only allowed to put a 17-year-old in for one day. But they forgot he was there and he went with no food or water for seven days. So needless to say, he spent 31 days in the psychiatric ward and we're trying to work on rebuilding his mitochondria. So many conditions are associated with mitochondria. Diabetes, Alzheimer's, the aging process, anxiety disorders. But couldn't you give somebody some Prozac for anxiety? But are we addressing an underlying cause? Likewise, exercise intolerance. You named a condition, the peer review literature points to the mitochondria. So today's conversation will be on the diabetes, the heart disease, the Alzheimer's, and the common themes. So of course our hearts beating continuously, 103,680 times per day. Just like we're losing one brain cell per second, that's 86,400 per day. The question is, what have we done for our heart lately? Lots of times I'll have a patient, and I'll go ahead and grab one of my pens, and I'll go click, 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 click. And I said, if I did that all day long with my thumb, will my thumb want to show up tomorrow? 
No. I mean, we talk about having a mechanical issue, but our heart does that day in and day out. So I always challenge my patients, what have we done for our heart lately? We know that statin drugs poison the mitochondria. We also know that CoQ10 helps with some of that pathway. Now we know in part why. So when we look at dysfunction,